Hello Python coders. So in today's video, I wanted to go over a couple of simple but very powerful rules of computer programming. And I'm pulling this together not only from other sources that I have read and found over the years, but I'm also putting these together from my 22 years of experience in the computer programming field. So I've been a systems engineer, also a developer, sometimes at the same time, most of the time at the same time. And over that time period, I've learned a few things about working in information technology. But when it comes to computer programming, I think that there are three simple basic rules that you need to follow when writing any code whatsoever. And this is not techno technology specific. It applies to Python, COBOL, Fortran, C Sharp, C++, whatever you're working with. These rules are all across the board. OK, what's rule number one? Rule number one, it must work. I don't care what project you're doing. I don't care what code you're working on. If what you're doing doesn't work, then it really doesn't amount to a hill of beans. OK, I'm going to illustrate this with a story. So years ago, and this is back in the late oh, 1960s, early 1970s, there was a, a luxury car manufacturer, most likely Lincoln or Cadillac. I don't know which one it was. But they were putting a system together where a customer could walk into the dealer and say, all right, I want to order this. I want a four-door. I want a sedan. I want a four-door hardtop. I want a two-door coupe. Here's the color I want. Here's the interior color. I want the seats to be made out of this material, carpets, the accessories like air conditioning, those kinds of things. And this was um, assigned to the, this project was given to a team at the car manufacturer somewhere in Detroit, most likely. And they, they tried to get it to work. However, they kept focusing on a couple of the wrong things. Number one, they were horribly mired in looking at the performance of the application versus rule number one, it must work. So what they were doing is they were putting together work orders for cars, but the cars would have no seats. The cars would have no steering wheels. Now in that particular case, it's fine if you've lost your butt and you don't know which way to steer, but you know, most people are gonna want seats. They're gonna want a steering wheel. They're gonna want doors. They're gonna want you know basic things like air conditioning, that kind of thing. So this was not going very well. And a young engineer who was on the project finally threw up his hands and said, okay, I've had enough. Fly me home. I've just, I've absolutely had enough of this. So he's flying home, but he's got a notebook and a pen with him. So he starts scribbling down notes in the notebook and trying to work out how would you solve the problem? And on that flight, he figured it out. So he lands at his destination, gets on the phone and says, listen, I've had a couple hours to think about this on the airplane. I've got a solution. Please fly me back. I'll illustrate how we can solve this and make this work. So they flew him back. They were rather reluctant, but they, they flew him back. And he's in the meeting room and he's discussing how you would make this work successfully. One of the more senior engineers asks him a question, and you have to remember, this is when we were in the punch card era. So he says, well, how long do you think that your system is going to take to process each card? And the younger engineer says, well, by my estimates, you're going to be looking at about three seconds per card. 
And the senior engineer kind of looks at him and gets a silly grin on his face and says, ah, well, our system only takes half a second per card. And the young engineer leans over the table, looks at him and says, yeah, but mine works. And that is a big key thing. His solution worked. So I don't care how elegant you write your code. I don't care how clever you think you are. If you try to put something in front of your end user that doesn't work, they are going to eat you alive. So always remember rule number one, your program must work. Otherwise, not worth much of anything. All right, rule number two, it must be maintainable. Okay, notice that these two are musts. All right, these two kind of go hand in hand. But really, rule number two, it must be maintainable. And when I say maintainable, I mean that not only must it be maintainable by you, but it must be maintainable by other people. In other words, if you were to bring a colleague in or even a friend who happens to be another developer, let's say that you send them your code and you say, take a look at this. If your friend looks at this code and says, this is, ab this is an absolute mess, then it does not pass rule number two. It's not maintainable. Just because you do things, or you, you may think that you're doing things in a really clever way, that doesn't mean that other people are going to be able to easily figure out that other way. You might think you're being clever, but really you're not. You're just making the situation worse. One and two tend to go somewhat hand in hand. Um, if, an, if end users want changes, and believe me, I don't care what application you do, I don't care what project you do, when you put it out there, eventually somebody is going to want something changed. This might be something that happens immediately, or it might be weeks or months down the road, but requirements always change. You want to be able to deliver those changes quickly and accurately. It makes your life just so much easier. So no matter what coding language you're using, always look at ways that you can make your code more readable and more maintainable. And no, I do not mean shove a whole bunch of comments into your code. Comments are fine, but comments should not recurgitate what the code is actually doing. So don't think that because, well, I've commented the living heck out of this thing means that it's going to be easier to read. You might actually be making the problem 10 times worse. All right, so be careful with your comments, but look at your code structure. There's a reason why Python has a styling guide for it, which is PEP8. Try and follow it as much as you possibly can. Other programming languages have their own. But you have to remember, if you can't maintain it, if other people look at it and scream and want to run out of the room by looking at your code, then it's not maintainable. All right. Rule number three. OK, now you can think about things like performance. OK, so let's say you've passed rule number one and you've written your code that that looks you know, reasonably, reasonably presentable, somebody can actually maintain it. Now you can start thinking about things like performance. One of the biggest mistakes that people make, just like in the example story that I gave you for rule number one, one of the biggest mistakes I see people all the time, well, I can get this to run you know, 0.5% uh, of a second faster if I do blah, 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 and they make a giant mess out of it, it, it really does not matter. Now, you know that my channel here is focused mostly on GUI programming in Python using the Qt library. With that being the case, 
Most of the time, the performance things that you're going to have to worry about are going to be things like writing to a backend database, maybe creating a JSON file, maybe processing thousands of records. Those things you can do with threading, you can make the application perform much better. But if it doesn't work at all, it really doesn't make a difference how well it performs. If it doesn't do what, what your customer or what your end user wants, you might as well throw the whole thing out the window. And if it's difficult to maintain, it's going to be a nightmare in the future. That's where things like technical debt come from because, well, we've got this crazy, bizarre, and unworldly routine that Milton Wilberforce wrote in 1940 Futsack, and he was the only guy that could deal with it, and we're stuck with it because nobody can decipher this code. If you think that that type of thing is uncommon, it happens all the time. And so, you know, you got to think about it. a lot of I've heard people say, well, it creates good job security. No, no, it does not. And the other thing is you don't want to dump your garbage on somebody else in the future. Okay, so think of these rules in order. It must work. It must be maintainable. Okay, now I can start thinking about, once I pass those two, now I can start thinking about the performance and how this thing functions. And in many cases, just because you might be able to shave a second off of something that you're doing, if you violate rule number one or rule number two, it ain't worth it. It is just not worth it. You're going to make a mess. Now, here's a side note that I wanted to include with this. And I, I did this because this channel is more focused towards GUI programming with Python, but interactive applications should look somewhat pleasing. So let's take a look at an example. And I'm going to go into PyCharm here. And this is a sample application that I have used in other examples. And let's just take a look at this. I'm going to bring up Qt Designer. All right. This is a pretty simple entry form where I have, I can enter a first name and a last name, and then that actually gets written out to a database. But what I want to do is I'm going to make this a mess. I'm going to break the layout there, and then I should be able to delete this. Delete this, delete this, I'm going to break the layout here, and let's just make a mess. This is not something I get to do very often, actually, <laughs> for obvious reasons. All right, so how good does that look to you? This looks like a complete monkey had all these widgets in their hand and threw them at the monitor. So going along with rule number one, if you're going to make an application like this and when you're designing something with an interface, interface design goes hand in hand with rule number one. An end user will look at this and think this doesn't work. So this violates rule number one. Not only is it ugly, it's uglier than a turnip, but this is completely and totally unusable. So you've got to start thinking about aesthetic design in those particular cases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard this, close this, close this, and let's go back into it. All right, now this looks like dialog boxes that we've all seen in the past. You have your first name, your last name, the two fields. The window will automatically expand. So if I run Control R, here's my preview. This looks decent. Okay, now you might say, well, it looks a little dated or looks a little on the plain side, but really it, it functions and it doesn't look terrible. Okay, and that's the type of thing that I go for. I, I want to focus on functionality, but I also want to make an interface that looks decent. 
It looks good. There are whole books that have been written. I've got a couple of them. There are whole books that have been written on interface design, and it's worth taking a look at if you are going to be dealing with interactive applications. Now, another thing that you can do is look at interactive applications, things where you're already familiar with the interface. So if you have a favorite GUI application that you're using today, look at what they're doing and you can replicate what they're doing inside of your own project. Or you may look at that project and think, well, you know, if you tweak this just ever so slightly, then maybe I can make this look just a little bit better. So there are thousands upon thousands of GUI applications out there that you can take and grab a look at. Plus, there are I don't know how many articles that have been written about user interface design. Go out there and see what's working and what's not. You don't always have to replicate what somebody else is doing. But I think it's worth digging into the study of it a little bit because it'll make your application look better. And when the application look better, looks better, then you've got a higher chance of passing rule number one. Somebody actually wants to use it. So to go hand in hand with that, rule number one is what? It must work. And kind of a side note to that, somebody must actually want to use it. And that includes yourself. All right. Any questions, any comments, go ahead and put them in the comments. And as always, guys, happy coding.